Good afternoon and welcome to Seller Pass TV live from Hall St. Helena. It is a beautiful day here in wine country. The fog just lifted out of the Napa Valley, if you can believe that or not. It is 4 o'clock and it might actually make it to 80 degrees in August. So you know what that means. Harvest is slowing down just a little bit so those grapes can get nice and sweet for the perfect wines to go into our glass and into our mouths. So in just a few minutes, we're gonna be sipping these fantastic wines from McPhail, and we're gonna hear from Jim, who aspires to make the biggest ball of twine. But first, what's going on in wine country? Well, I'm glad you asked. That's a fantastic question, and I wanna know. So tomorrow, August 21st, we have at Buena Vista Winery, we have Shakespeare Under the Stars, and they're doing a live theatrical performance of Taming of the Shrew. That's actually gonna happen Thursday through Sunday. Then on Saturday, Jessup Sellers Art House Sessions are back, this time featuring Keaton Simons. And that's always a fun, wine-filled, music-filled event. And Wine and Sunsets Music Series at Lava Cap up in the Sierras. Don't want to miss it. They have a magnificent view of the sunset over their mountains. And then on Sunday, the 24th, day to the ballpark with Cosentino. It's a full day excursion with transportation from the winery to the Coliseum and back. Wine, food, and a special jersey. So that's really, really, really cool. To get tickets to these exciting events and more, go to cellarpass.com. And now, put it together and let's welcome Jim Morris. Yay! <laughs> Welcome, sir. Hey, it's good to be here. Yeah, it's good to have you. Thanks, thanks for having me aboard. Absolutely. So, how was the drive over into this valley? The, it, the, the uh, 405 was backed up all the way to Tahunga. It does that. So, Culver City. Yeah, and so, yeah, but I took the PCH all, all the way in. So Brilliant. It was, Smart man. It was great. And, not uh, bad. I noticed you only brought three bottles of wine, so what happened to the others? Is that what got uh, you here? I was Told to only right on, I, I was told to only bring two, I, actually. I had a driver. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Excellent. So we are sipping your Sonoma Coast Chardonnay. Or you at least are. I've been sipping your Sonoma Coast Chardonnay. <laughs> there's, 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 there's straws still in the bottle over there. It's, I have my sippy straw at home. Excellent. It's fantastic. It's got the curly cues. It's the perfect wine accessory. As, as it should be. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about this wine. Well, the Sonoma Coast Chardonnay that you and all the bloggers out there That's have right. been to our writing about. Hi, hi bloggers. Um, anyway, it's the Sonoma Coast Chard. That, uh, it's actually a very cool departure from what we normally do at McPhail. We uh, do a, a Gaps Crown uh, Chardonnay. We also do a Pinot from Gaps Crown. But in 2012, we decided to take some of that Chardonnay and do it in stainless. Ooh. So completely unoaked, save one little neutral barrel. Which is why I like this one. And it's just a totally clean, pure style of Chardonnay. And it's it's a consumer consumers have really been moving toward a stainless Chardonnay, and we said, okay, okay, let's try it. Why not? I so love it. It, it is very it's it's beautiful. You get a real sense of the fruit itself. Um, nothing against oak. I love you dearly. But it's nice to taste the fruit every once in a while. It's and it, and this is a delicious little drop. So. Absolutely, and so well, cheers. And to you. And on to our first sips. Oh, I thought we were supposed mm. to just chug. No, that's only for the whiskey uh, episode. Okay. All right, and we but want to thank delicious. our rock star bloggers today. We have flawless crowns and cellar mistress and my vine spot joining us online. So we'll be taking your questions here momentarily. But gang, what do we think about this stainless un oak chardonnay? I'm digging it. As you can tell, my glass is almost empty. So it must be good, or at least I think so. And what's going on over at McPhail? You guys just moved to your new tasting room. We did. So we're one of the really cool things about our little winery is that um, we have been essentially pouring and selling wine out of James McPhail's house for the last six years. And That's cozy. It's he built a beautiful winery literally it's behind his house. Gorgeous. And we were always by appointment and we were only you know we just opened in the last year on weekends. And so over the past couple of years we've been developing our new tasting lounge at the Barlow in Sebastopol. And for those of you that don't know what the Barlow is, it's this it, it well just in USA today, the Barlow was vote, was voted one of the top five 
food halls in the country. Already? Uh, it's crazy, wow. I know, but but it's a, it's a really cool place. It's it used to be an old apple processing center. It used to be the largest apple processing center in the world. We're talking about the ones you actually eat. Not, exactly. Not this kind of apple. Bef before, before people decided or figured out that actually the yield and the money you can make on Pinot and Chardonnay was greater than was better than that in apple. So, as a result, apple orchards were taken out, grapes were planted. How long before we think that flips? Uh, it won't. Oh, okay. No, I mean if there's even a big cider movement now, but but we're here talking about wine. <laughs> but anyway, so the so the Barlow literally was, it fell in disrepair. It was this big, ugly warehouse, mess of warehouses that you saw driving into and Sebastopol. Said this would be the coolest little village. Yeah, so they decided to, uh, a guy named Barney Aldridge had this vision that he would create a place where all of these makers of things, and that was kind of his requirement, that you had to make it, grow it, create it, assemble it in Sonoma County, could be in this center. So they kept some of the original buildings, but there's now a, it's a co congregation of 14 buildings, uh, all these metal industrial looking buildings. Uh, they're filled with makers, and so makers it's a, of things. makers of things. What and kind we of happen things to be you? makers of great Fine. Pinot and right. Chardonnay. So uh, we have a tasting right, the tasting lounge in the middle, literally in the heart of the Barlow. Um, and there are the Barlow itself is so cool. If there's five wineries, okay, um, we're all in fact all five wineries are Pinot producers: Costa Brown, uh, La Follette, um, Miramar Torres, and Wind Gap are also our neighbors. Not bad. Good company. Good company. Um, and then we have there's three great restaurants. There's Zazu. Um, there is um, Wood Four, and there's a new pizzeria called Vignette. Nice. Um, who the the chef is from uh, French Laundry, so just so I can speak a little Napa over here. Good um, to know. And then, so, but there's He's got there, three brownie points, by the way. Yes. So then there's there's actually two breweries, a distillery, there's a nectary, there's a there's a Yerba, Yerba Mate manufacturer, wow. there's a uh, a crepe place, and that's just the food and but beverages. And then there's crepe a, place. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So it's, it's cool. So in a in an ice cream place. Wow. And it's so all food and, and beverage. It, a or? lot of it's food and beverage. It's like they're trying to get more retail space in. Um, there's a Tibetan art gallery, which is the guy was who's making this beautiful piece was commissioned by the Dalai Lama to make this once in a generation uh, art piece, which is pretty cool. Um, so, so you've got that going for them, which we is got, nice. It's just it's a very interesting eclectic mix of things in in Sebastopol. That is really cool. So, well, it sounds like a really fun happening place it's, to be. Yeah. Um, well, we were talking about events, but you guys have any events going on over there? It, no. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No. No. We. we As so a we, matter of fact. So we've we've been open all of three weeks. We it's like a very quiet. Opening so, so you're far, we're still smelling the paint. And it's the, it has that new tasting room smell to it. <laughs> so and um, so, what we're doing is in September, October, we're going to start rolling out kind of a general, our general small open house thing to the industry and trade, and, nice. and Very cool. then we'll have a bigger grand opening later on. But um, so we actually our biggest it's the, shh, we're open parties right it, now. It, right now, it's just kind of. It's a secret handshake society, so <laughs> you have to know the secret handshake to get in our room. So, um, no, it's, so we're just we're, we really want to do right things right. So we're trying to make sure we um, get our ta you know we do a series of tastings and, and we do a, there's a lot of really unique things that we're going to start adding on. Um, the first thing we're going to do is I work with different cheese makers. So once a month I'm going to roll out. A single, you know, one purveyor of cheese. The first month being uh, Valley Ford Cheese Company, and so all that month we're going to feature cheeses from them. They're going to come in and talk about their cheeses. We'll do a, a cheese pairing um, in the tasting lounge, and then uh, we'll move on to the next month. And you know, we'll have other stalwarts like Cowgirl Creamery, Creamery Humboldt Fog. Um, uh, the, 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 they're all, all sorts of cool. Fun. It sounds really cool, and. Yeah. Uh, there's always been something new going on there. 
Yes. Which is awesome. It is. So you can find McFallon SolarPass.com and of course stay tuned and check in frequently to find out what kind of tastings they're going to be offering at the Barlow. And it sounds like the cheese pairings are going to be super fun. And then you guys have your fall release celebration coming up in October as well. We do. So um, we're in Pinot Noir world, one of the things that's really that you'll find consistently is Pinot producers have a spring and fall release. And so typically how we work is that we we send our email our email list a release notice in fall, which happened to fall on August 12th this year, and then we, we you know people have a month to buy our wines, and then we then have a big party for them to come and pick them all up. And so we sell a lot of our wines through our releases. So we do spring and fall release, which you can sign up to be part of our mailing list at Mc. McPhailWines.com. Um, we'll double check that. We'll post that online. McPhailWines.com. <laughs> um, and oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, so and uh, when oh, you're so a then, member, you can go to the parties. There you go. So <laughs> no. So when you so it, this is and this is a party to the, the first day that we will actually pour our 2012 releases. Ooh, very exciting. So we'll set up. We'll have some nice food and wine pairings. Uh, we're doing it at the Barlow. Yeah. A cool little very, event space. Very, very cool. And so it's by, it's by invitation only. So you do need to get on our list. So get and, on the list, yeah, absolutely. And, and come and taste our wines. But it's on October 4th. Um, there will be all sorts of fun things. We're just, the plan is Are you have a coming together. This year? Uh, a human pinata. Oh, it's kind of nice. a it's kind of a new touch. Yeah, it's how kind does of the, that go over? The boy, it's kind of like the boy in the bubble thing, and we rent just have one of those. We, it's me usually. <laughs> I'm kind of walking around in the room, and people are bashing me. Hopefully, it's me. a foam mat. <laughs> no, 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 no pinata this no year. No pinata. It's, okay, yeah, well, so. next time. But no, it's it's it would, well, it's we actually found out it's also on the same day as the the Sebastopol zombie run. And so it's like, which you stay up all night it's kind of a perfect, the next morning, it's or? kind of a perfect pairing, Pinot and zombies. Sounds and, like the Walk of Shame. Yeah. It does, absolutely, the yeah. Walk of Shame 5K. But no, it's, it, but it's, you know, the, the, it's part of the whole vibe of the Barlow. There's a lot of eclectic uses of the place. And, that is really but, fun. So, but we'll, you know, we'll be done before the race starts, but... Um, but it'll be fun. It's that so sounds like that's, that'll blast. be our first day that you'll be able to try our new 2012. Well, I'll have to come so. check it out and get on uh, the list. Y you all should check yeah, it everybody out. Everybody should check this out. We do have some questions already coming in and commentary. Love it from our rock star bloggers out there. Just lovely, fruit forward, clean flavor profile, and no oak bomb here. That's right. This is un oak Chardonnay at its finest. And it's. If it's white, it's wine. I don't have that one. What? You guys are funny. All right. And then we have, I have two Pinotos as well. I would like to hear about the 2011 uh, Cinema Coast in relation to the, to the Pinot Noir. We're going to be getting to those Pinots in just a moment. Just a and then we also have, Jim seems like such a gent. Can he share how he got into the wine business? Well, I thank you so much for asking, Flawless Crowns, because I was going to ask the same thing. Wow, I didn't know I was in the wine business. But I, well, apparently. No, it's, no it's, I, had I figured out that I could actually make a, make a living talking about adult beverages early on, I'd be, I would have done this a long time ago. But It's a little known secret. There are a lot of jobs in the wine it's, business. It's a lot of fun. No, it's... Um, I had a point in my career about 15 years ago that I could continue to try to make money or take the vow of poverty and go into the wine business. And so. And so that's I, why we have Cellar Pass TV. So we can drink on camera. Exactly. Once a week. No, it's, and it was just something, you know, it, I was in a very fortunate position that I could actually take a couple of years and learn the wine business. So some friends of mine. Had a wine sales and marketing company, and uh, I just they hired me as a low-paid intern and learned the business from the ground up, doing all sorts of just really cool, fun, interesting projects. And that's actually the first time I met James McPhail when he really had just started his brand. And um, in the early, early days of his brand, he had hired. Or we were talking to him about finding distribution for him on a national basis, and. 
I tried his wines and loved them. Like, and why he, do you want to distribute these? <laughs> yeah, well, the, you know, honestly, back in 2002, 2003, it was like nobody really thought about direct to consumer. It, right. The whole business model was put it in a distributor, send yeah. it out, get, find yeah. it in your grocery store. Exactly. And my how things have changed. A I little mean, bit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, now it's, you know, small producers, you know, you want to get the wines at the winery, uh, it, there's such a magic to it. And um, especially when it, it, they're small lot wines, you don't want those getting out into this distribution because of uh, many reasons, there's just not enough production. And secondly, even if you did, you're not gonna stand up against the big dogs, so the distributors aren't gonna pay attention to you, so your wines are kind of falling flat and sitting on warehouse shelves instead of in well, people's bellies. Where well, you and we have the best of both worlds. Um, we actually, um, we're part of the Hess Collection family. And which is little brand. Yeah, no, it's and it, it is funny because they're still they're an international family, not small, but they're an international family-owned business, family-owned, family-operated. They own wineries on four, uh, in four countries, four continents, and but they had always really sought out a, P, a Pinot Noir house. They really wanted to create, you know, to have a high-end Pinot Noir brand. And so James McPhail was hired um, on, on a consulting basis to make their Sequana uh, Pinot Noir, which is a brand that they started many years ago. Okay. And th it just was a nice relationship, and the, eventually it evolved into Hess um, acquiring the McPhail brand. And so what we don't sell through the direct-to-consumer channels, it's sold through the Hess Network, which is primarily a great door opener for a lot of white linen tablecloth restaurants, all the high-end wine shops in, you know, in certain select markets. So it's a very, very sought-after brand, and it's really a nice part of the whole Hess portfolio. But what's really fascinating is that we've, James has still been given total creative license to do the wines in the style that he continues to Which do. Which is why Hess fell in love with them, and it totally yeah. makes sense. I yeah, think that's that's a, wonderful. it's one of those really beautiful relationships. A lot of times, large wineries buy small wineries. And, and then it, that's it. And, but this has been a really nice collaborative effort that you know, they've given him the, create, the creativity and the, you know, the, the bandwidth to do what he wants to do. And so it's, his wines are just continued to get more and more luxurious and beautiful. And I think as part of that is, is the relationship he has with Hess. So. Oh, it sounds really, really cool and, uh, and really rare, too, because you, know, you, know, like, so yeah. you don't often see that, uh, being able to still maintain the creativity and the quality that you started with, uh, especially when you need to get acquired like that. Uh, but now we are on to the Pinot Noir, and I know our bloggers are very excited to talk about this. And one of the questions came in is, um, tell us a little bit about the 2001 vintage specifically um, or surrounding the Pinot Noirs. The, the 2011 vintage? Yes, that one. That one. Yes, the, 2001, the, extra, the extra one. Yeah, it's, Two ones. <laughs> <laughs> Two, oh, one, exactly. one. Exactly. <laughs> so 2011 sucked in the vineyards. It just was one of those. Uh, it that, was a rough And that year. was the nicest term. It, it, and I, That's the PG rating. I feel, you know, in, this is it's really funny because the whole vintage itself was a difficult vintage in the vineyards. It rained like crazy in the springtime, knocked off a lot of the flowers. Um, so right there, the crop is Thin. thinned dramatically. Then very mild summer on in some areas an average temperature of 10 to 12 degrees below average we, the entire we summer. We wore sweaters all summer long. It was, it was bizarre. Yeah it was it was just a bizarre thing so nothing ripened and veration just took forever to do and then as as vineyard guys started pulling leaves to increase exposure to the sun, and all of a sudden, three days of 110 plus degree heat literally cooked all of the grapes on the west side of the vineyard. So, all of a sudden, it's like, now oh my God, we've got all these vineyard, these grapes that are messed up on the left side, on the west side, but the morning side, the grapes were still beautiful. I mean, they were still weren't totally ripe. So then they slowly began to ripen, and then it rained. And then when the rains Man. came, and so it was just this great challenge. But what, to me, this is where really, really talented winemakers make their earning, uh, make their living, is making great wines out of a bad vintage, a, a challenging vintage. And so some of the 11s that we're pouring are some of my favorite wines, and, I, and I'm completely biased, but 
they're uh, but but they're dark. they're actually beautiful. I, we've done a lot of comparative tastings, and and the elevens um, they tend to be lower alcohol because the grapes weren't as white ripe uh, when we picked, but the flavors are still there. And the grape we, part of what we do is we 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 select. Uh, we basically we hand sort everything we do, and in some cases we double sorted. So we hand sorted bunches. We sorted out in the vineyards. Did a lot of th you know thinning, but we also dropped a lot of fruit out of the bins. Then we took them to a sorting table. We sorted clusters. Then we actually did, did berry sort on some of our things. So we got rid of a, a lot of the really funkiness. Highly detailed. So we went from you know. Typically, we'll do 6,000 cases. We made about 3,600 cases in 2011. But the wines that we, that we produce and we're, we're pouring in the room currently are magnificent. They're, and these are actually, I think these are going to continue to get better over the years. Oh, they are absolutely delicious. And uh, so, I mean, to kind of summarize it, 2011 was quite the quagmire vintage. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing went right, and yet there's so many absolutely delicious, exceptional wines that came out of that year. And uh, so cheers to the winemakers who really had to yeah. flex their skills and work with, with what nature yeah. gave them that year. I mean, so whatever you read about the 2011, if people are panning the vintage, just ignore those people from now on because you, you, sh you really should try some of these great wines from 2011 because they're There's beautiful. Excellent, and excellent wines. So. And, and this is one of them, for sure. And then we're going to move on to the Anderson Valley Pinot Noir. Yeah, well, we haven't even talked about this one yet. No, we haven't. That's true. So, we just talked about the vintage. So, and, and we're just drinking. So, and so Sarah, fun. let me get you back on target oh, here. <laughs> so this, this is actually the 2011 San Giacomo. And um, San Giacomo is a very famous wine-growing family in Sonoma County. We, they're, they own some of the most beautiful vineyards. A lot of their vineyards are in eastern Sonoma County, Sonoma Valley, um, in the hills above um, Petaluma. This particular vineyard is literally is in the hills. It's considered Sonoma Coast, being 20, 23 miles inland from the ocean. Um, we won't go into the politics of Appalachian what, what drawing, but, but but Sonoma Coast. This is a Sonoma Coast Pinot from the the Gaps Crownish area. Okay. It's so it's. Geographically, break out Google Earth. It's uh, between Pengrove and Petaluma, up Roberts Road, um, and it's kind of lower hills, uh, just kind of the foothills above um, Petaluma, and it's just this beautiful, you know, beautiful vineyard that we pull Pinot Noir from and have for years, and it's just one of our signature Sonoma Coast Pinots. It's delicious. It, it has flavors delicious. of like, I mean, I'm just. Still getting this lingering, you know, plum, dark, you know, uh, you know, dark black cherry, mm -hmm. even cola <laughs> flavors out of this. It's, it's one of our bigger style uh, pinots, but it's absolutely delicious. Oh, it's fantastic! I can't get over the nose. The nose is absolutely beautiful on this wine. And for those of you, our bloggers at home, and anybody who happens to be sipping their McPhail wines along with us, I mean, this you could just sniff this wine. Mm -hmm. For hours, I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful, yeah. and uh, and I know our bloggers are saying a lot of the same thing, saying amazing nose on this eleven. Uh, oh wow, it's purely heaven, and I want something bacony. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, bacony. That makes that's totally that makes it and figs. Well, well bacon and figs. With you could come to the tasting room in October when we have our pork and pinot pairings with Zazu, and Perfect. you might have a bacony a sort bacon of thing. And as well, so. and oh my gosh, I love it. And uh, yes, we are on the Sonoma coast, and it's firm structure yet delicate with black cherry, rhubarb, mold spice, finely textured, lovely example of the Pinot Noir. Yes, Dizelle, you nail it every time. You're amazing. D I sent Dizelle a copy of the big book of wine adjectives, and he's using them well. So. <laughs> That was a good gift. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Cellar Mistress loves the softness of the Cinema Coast 2011 Pinot Noir. It's beautiful, rich cherry cola and great baking spice notes. Way to go on that one. I was I was picking up on some like cinnamon and nutmegs and just everything about fall. And I think you know with our weather today, it was like the weather cooperated for the wines we were drinking because this is definitely something you want to just snuggle up by the fire and um, and just enjoy the evening. It's so absolutely delicious. And uh, we. I'm kind of. 
Want to snuggle up a little closer? Get in here. Check this out. This is this is pretty nice. And then we also have expressive, excellent combo of elegance, richness, purity, and finesse. Nice, nice depth and polished finish. You guys are all going to get jobs from these wineries. Keep it up. I love it. And uh, and I and I couldn't ex you know, express it any better. These are truly delicious wines, and I am loving it. But let's hear about Jim and playing in the wine biz and, and this whole fascination with full contact bocce. I'm, I'm very intrigued by this. Oh, I just thought that would be a fun league to start. I, I have, think so. Do you I, throw I, the I, balls or is it like knocking them out while oh, they're no, trying it's, to roll? Oh, no, it's trying to tackle them while they throw the bocce ball. Oh, I like it. So, so you might have to wear a little hockey gear. I am. I, and a shout out to my bocce partners. Th Thursday nights, I, we do bocce in Healdsburg and I'm in a Thursday night bocce league and it's I Fabulous. like this. This could make bocce very exciting. You've got, you've got the, to hold your wine glass and your ball and I, sustain a good tackle. I, 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 I encourage any sport that encourages a glass in one hand and a heavy ball in the Counterbalance. other. Counterbalance. So, exactly. And you have to get your pour just right because if this hand isn't really going to balance you, then your ball goes off in the wrong direction exactly. and it's really terrible. Exactly. Really terrible. Uh, Flawless Crown says the Pinot Noir is quite tasty. The dark fruit is just amazing. And I'm thinking of hamburgers. Ooh, I like that. With I'm bacon. Th I'm thinking Kobe beef Kobe burgers. Kobe beef burger. Nice. Mm. I don't know. I think uh, actually what I made last night was a pork tenderloin with a balsamic fig and onion reduction marmalade. And that would be. You make that at home? I did. Took exactly 20 wow. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Jonathan. Wish you could have seen the, our camera guy's face on that one. That was brilliant. Yes, yes, she does. Uh, it was fantastic and uh, great recipe. I'll have to post it sometime because it literally was a 20 minute recipe. It was fabulous. Easy peasy. Um, but this would be fantastic with that. But I think the bacon, that's what it was missing. And I think a little um, crispy bacon added to that would have been just the thing. And, uh, but bloggers at home, I'm thinking, what are you eating tonight? I know most of you, it's dinner time. And uh, so what you got going on? I'd love to hear it. And any questions you have for Jim, please shout it out. Um, he likes long walks on short piers and cuddling up with teddy bears. So there you go. And Dizelle is coming back in with appreciate the correct color of the Pinot Noir. Moderate ABV. Uh oh, Dizelle, you're speaking over my head again. I have to explain what ABV is. And elegance, appealing. And anything with lamb for me, this wine would be perfect. Fabulous. What, what time's dinner, Dizel? <laughs> it's now, of course. It's, it's wine time. And what do we have here? Uh, just over there this weekend, love their Pinots. Absolutely. That was coming from you know, Wine Country this week. That's fantastic. Um, so, so one yeah. other thing, I, and I highly recommend Wine Country this week as... I recommend Wine oh, Country every week. Be, well, only because and <laughs> it, 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 we were the cover. We were on the cover oh, recently, well, which was a, kind of a cool thing. But and it, it we're part of their. Uh, oh, it's like things to do in Sonoma County, and the Barlow is going to be a big part of their future things. So I anyway, love it. Shout out to the Wine Country this week, folks. Absolutely. Um, yeah, no, it's it, in, for those of you that are planning your holiday gift-giving plans and, and trips to the Barlow That's right. that sort of thing. It's Christmas in August. It is. I, I really wanted to be like the first one to do a Christmas shout out. But well, Walmart beat you to it. I'm sure they were oh, between no, the lights You know up. what? Actually, <laughs> at, at, co at Costco, they're at oh, hard. Costco, it's hard. I hate that. It just kills me. Oh. No, because one of, the, one, of the, one of the things about um, the Pinot Noir world is it, Pinot is such a great wine that shares the nuances of where it's grown. And we actually we have wines from five different appellations that we pour in our room, from Oregon to Santa Rita Hills to Anderson Valley to Sonoma Coast. I haven't had the Santa Rita Hills one. Oh, it's, oh. you'll have to come to the winery oh. for that. Um, Must be on site but, to enjoy. But one of, the, one of the really, really fun things that we have coming up in November uh, that isn't even mentioned yet, but we have a, a really exciting announcement that will be but I'll give you the exclusive right now. That Thank you. We actually have uh, our very first estate vineyard um, that James McPhail and Jim Pratt, who manages a number of our vineyards, uh, planted this beautiful piece of property that literally is one of the prime pieces of property that every peanut producer in their 
brothers wanted to get their hands on. And so uh, James was able to secure the property and they planted it from the ground up. They just like sit on it and have a train and say, I'm it not just, leaving, it's it, mine, it's mine, it's mine. It, it totally is. And it literally, it's across <laughs> the street from um, the Fort Ross Sea View Appalachian. So it's, oh, it has a beautiful nice. view of the ocean. <gasps> but but it is one of those western facing vineyards, has eight different clones. Can we put over a tasting teepee over there? So we well, you know, the well, eventually, Maybe. well, we might have a little bit. Okay. But that's, that's down another the road. discussion. But uh, anyway, so it's, it's called the Mardikian Vineyard. Mardikian, um, I love so the name. The, the, Mardikian. Like an evildoer on James Bond. An evildoer on it's, James Bond, like, yes. It's, it's like double it, And he's seven. one of the nicest guys on the planet. Pinot but, Noir uh, Lair. Hygnar uh, uh, Mardikian, and it's this amazing piece of property, but our very first vintage from, then we could call it an estate vineyard because we actually have a 25 year lease or 30 year lease on the property. So we can call it a state. So our, our very first estate wine is coming in November. Yay uh, for we'll estate wine. So it's, it's called Mardikian. It's a very special bottle, it even has a metal label on it. Um, it but it's, it'll be, it's the fourth of our, we have a dirt wall in our tasting room. So it literally is four walls of, of an eight foot depth of soils from four vineyards that will oh, be. Oh, so you can see the different. So you can see the different I'm strata. Like dirt wall, interesting. So, like adobe or? So we'll be, a, we'll, be a, we'll be rolling out our Mardikian, but our dirt tastings as well in the room. So Dirt tastings, how fun. I so, like it. So, but, you know, just Get your paws th dirty. things to wet your palate. Another reason to go to mcfailwines.com and sign up for our our mailing list. Absolutely. Something you ought to do right anyway, now. Anyway, just do it because you want to know these wines and you really want to get to know the McPhail team. They're super fun. Uh, Flawless Crowns, I'm being driven wild with the thoughts of Kobe beef. Jim, you're amazing. Uh, we are doing baked salmon with asparagus, white asparagus tips. Ooh, that sounds pretty good too. I'm Ooh. flying to New York. All right, and what's Jim's favorite pairing with these Pinots? Wow, way to go, Grace. I um, know. On the spot, Jim. Okay, so the first wine that we had, um, which is the stainless steel um, well, Chardonnay. Well, we had it, but they didn't have it. But Grace, Grace has a bottle of it. Oh, she, well, apparently she does. Grace is the special child. So one of the, I would pour. I would actually pair this with like a lemon sorbet. Lemon sorbet, ooh, that'd be good. Just, just put it on the sorbet. It just, uh, yeah. Oh, a scoop of I'm sorbet actually, in the glass, and it'd be like a I'm wine I'm actually working with an cocktail. ice cream company to make oh, Chardonnay yeah. and <gasps> Chardonnay sorbets. But, oh, Chardonnay sorbets. But no, it's, it's like this, it's so crisp and so refreshing, and it's like, it's like just as refreshing as a lemon sorbet. It's a great transition wine, I think, because when we're talking summer, um, we're all about the Sauvignon Blancs and the rosés and... Well, if you're like me, it's all about the bubbles, but, you know, very crisp, very kind of fruity, refreshing wines. And Chardonnay sometimes takes a backseat to the, the cooler months where you're kind of like almost a little bit more full bodied and, um, you know, it's just a, a much richer wine. So this one in particular, it's that perfect, like right now, into fall, it's going to carry you all the way into winter. So it's a great white to start transitioning into, just like your wardrobe. And I know Flawless Crowns can appreciate this. Um, it, not all wines have the season, so although you can drink anything anytime, just like your clothes, you probably don't necessarily need to wear your cutoffs in the middle of winter. Just like you don't need to drink the same wines in the middle of winter that you do in the summer. And I highly recommend a fully balanced wardrobe of wines. Just saying. All right, moving on to more feedback from our bloggers. We've got noshing on some steak and veggie kebabs marinated in spicy soy mixture. Yum. Oh, way to go, Grace. Stop it. I know. She's so <laughs> bad. And her and her patio door is hopefully getting installed. Otherwise, she'd be here right now. And she wouldn't be eating steak kebabs with marinated vegetables and spicy soy. Mm -mm, no, she wouldn't. All right. Uh, how long has James been producing wine? And what... What bottle attracted him to Pinot Noir? So let's talk about Mr. McPhail. Hmm. I don't know the answer to the second one. Okay. But James, if you're watching this, please tweet in. Call in now. Yes. The Our is operators five, are standing five, by. Five, 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 call, five, 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 five. Call, call Coddle. He's here. He's right there. <laughs> He's right here. He's in the back 40. Um, anyway, so no, I mean, James has a really cool story, which can be found on our website, McPhailWines.com. Um, but no, he 
he actually he got his degree in uh, not in the hospitality business. He ran. He was the general manager of a hotel. I'm totally winging it, James, because I don't know if you were general manager, but you were. But he was he was running the operations of a couple of we're going to write nice, James's story right A couple now. of really nice hotels, and he but he always had this deep love of of making wine. And so instead of going the route that a lot of people went through, UC Davis or uh, other schools, he did the apprentice route. And he went straight for the great and said, let's he, figure this out. So he actually apprenticed with three of the icons of the business, with Mary Edwards, Ooh. with Gary Farrell, and uh, with Greg LaFollette. Brilliant. And so those guys, I mean, they really are, they're all iconic in their own way and they have the masters of Pinot. They totally are. And so James really just he you know earned he earned sweat equity in the Pinot world. Very cool. So then he launched his own uh, 2002 was a very was his very first vintage and I actually still have a bottle of his Cabernet and Merlot that he made one one year before just he just once before he just stuck with his true passion of, the, of the Pinot the sampling noir. years. And so he's, and he, what's, what I, one of the really cool things I love about James, too, is that he has been working with some of his growers since the beginning. Um, we have a so vineyard loyal. called Toulouse uh, up in Anderson Valley, which um, he essentially discovered Vern at, at Toulouse. And he's really been one of the only wineries that he ever sold grapes to because he loved the style of wines that James made. And they just have this very honorable agreement between the two of them. It's, it's one of those really refreshing relationships. And, you know, James has been working with guys like the Duttons, with Jim Pratt, with the San Giacomo's for a long time. And it's just one of those things you just don't get a lot in this business is no, continuity and consistency. And um, so. Ah, Grace is saying she doesn't have the bottle of Chardonnay. Wh oh. What? I'm right? That's what I said. Oh, all right, girl, we well, have to, you know, drive up here. We've got right. this much left. <laughs> or, you know, call Jim. <clears throat> all right. Grace, you so know where I'm at. My vine spot's coming in with Loving the Packaging, Wonderful Story, Love McPhail. And uh, many of you are already onto the Anderson Valley Pinot Noir, and I think that is a great place to start. What? So while Jim's what a pouring great for him, segue. I'll finish the <laughs> Sonoma Coast. Excellent. Tell us about the logo and the story behind the label. There's wagons involved. A, a great question. So, no. Thank you, blogger John. Way to go, John. I'm Murray Mikey. You, you, yes. You're not just a we, talented we need, back scenes no, guy. We need a camera on the camera guy because he's super fun. And he's hot. Yeah, I think so. But that was a little he's, awkward coming from you. <laughs> <laughs> I already Sorry. saw your post earlier. Gee, <laughs> should I leave you two alone? <laughs> um, no, the wagon. So the uh, James part of you know part of what the magic of what James is all about is that he, he has this deep love for his family, and he had a really cool picture of his daughters in his old original Radio Flyer wagon, and he. Gave to the graphic artist that came up with the. I never the had one. I really brand. wanted one. Mom, if you're we, watching, I want a radio flower pattern for Christmas. Well, uh, hold that thought. We can get one from McPhail. Yeah, hold that thought. <laughs> so anyway, so the wagon became part of the label from day one, and so he always had, and uh, it was just kind of, it stuck, and it's one of the most distinct labels out there. It I, is. And it's I've been to many. Pinot uh, events and things like that, and you can just tell this label across the. It stands uh, out, and I and I think when you're looking at a bottle on a table or in a lineup, it, there's something very whimsical and approachable just about the label. Like you just want to pick it up and look at it, and not all wines can say that they that that pulls you in, and it's just one of those things where you're just like, oh, it's so cute, and it's so pretty, but it really kind of summarizes and brings into a label what. Honestly, I mean, wine country in Sonoma County specifically, it's about. It's a little rustic. It's family. It's it's, it's wine. It's grapes. It, it is what it is. It's I, simple. My 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 simple analogy has always been, Napa is Disneyland, and we're Frontierland over in Sonoma. But Frontierland is in Disneyland. <laughs> I, I'm just but saying. it's a very cool, <laughs> rustic sort of side of Disneyland. No, they got rid of Tom Sawyer's Island. What? Oh, you didn't know? I'm sorry, this is over. <laughs> <laughs> we're 
we're out of here. <laughs> wow, really? Yeah, I read that not too long ago. Wow, how it's, tragic. I hear more like California Adventure Park and more the, Disneyland. That's, that's oh, where the hopefully, jello shots are. Hopefully they haven't like replaced it with Blogger's Island or something they like that. They may have. <laughs> it's entirely possible, but, actually. <laughs> but... Uh, but anyway, so James kind of—it's always been this really family-oriented style of wine, and and, and you know, and and lots of our marketing. It's like him and the girls, and him and his wife Aww. Carrie. It's him and his dog Zuni. Um, there's all sorts of clever, all fun those things. Fun things. Blogger John, don't you have photos of our tasting lunch? Why, yes, we do. Thank you for asking. Wow, I'm All glad. right, we want to see some photos, so uh, keep watching. There'll be some photos coming up soon, and we'll keep talking about the feedback coming in from the bloggers. And, you know, Jim, I, I really wanted to talk about your, um, your charity mission, and I know this has been really near and dear to your heart, but... Um, you know, Jim is really all about finding a cure for comb overs, and I really need to know more about this <laughs> organization. No, it's 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 comb over awareness network. Excellent. It, is there a comb over awareness it, month? It, well, no, we're we're having comb over lessons. That it'll be one of the events we'll eventually publish and have a, lots of comb over experts there. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to save myself here really quickly. <laughs> So, this is what you get I'm, when you so, put it on your bio. I'm sorry, I put that in my bio now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I know damn, I there, there are many people better. afflicted with comb overs and, and bad ones at that. And so I just we wanted, thank you, especially wanted, the ladies. We thank you for this come session. Come up with a cure. Yes, please. And I can't <sighs> think of a better cure than a 2011 Anderson Valley Pinot Noir. I think it'll take a case. <laughs> Or two. Oh, yes. So, two if you want to be safe. Absolutely. So, <laughs> so and here's here's an interesting little side note. So this 2011, another 2011, which is delicious, if I may say so. Um, you may. In talking to Mark Buckley, who is here at our host. In spirit. Um, this is a, actually this is this is actually uh, from Anderson Creek. Uh, it's a blend of two vineyards, Anahala and Anahala Vineyards in Anderson Creek. Um, two beautiful vineyards right outside of, uh, of Philo. And I understand that our, our hosts, Hall Wines, also do an Anderson Creek Pinot Noir. So I'm anxious to try it. I well, think it would be. The Walt wines are delicious. And, and, um, and uh, Savoy. And Savoy. And yeah. So yeah. So, so fabulous. Try I mean, those right after it's, the it's show. nice to be in the same you know, company as those. Well, the great. great thing about Cellar Pass TV is that you know you can actually become a member of the studio audience, and you can sample the wines of the featured winery, like you guys. Why? Well, and then afterwards, you can go check out all the great hall wines and Walt wines that are going on out in the tasting room. And, and it's like standing room only here in the studio. And could you believe the today. traffic getting here? I, I tweeted I, about it. I know. I, it was I, insane. I posted a picture. It was insane. It, was insane. it felt crazy. like it was the Who concert in Cincinnati in I know. Like 1983 Jeez. or something. It's like, <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. So, dun, 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 dun. we so, have, I'm assuming the Anderson Valley fared better than Sonoma Coast in 11. Also, could you contrast the climates for us? Mm, Ooh, uh, no, technical question. Uh, actually, Anderson Valley went through the exact same growing issues that we did. Sun, no um, sun, rain, sweaters, Yeah, Anderson Valley, sweaters. It's, a, it's geographically, it's a whole different animal. It's a long, narrow valley. It's, it's about 16 miles long north to south and about two miles wide. So it's, it's, it's a cool little valley, and when, when the fog comes in, it burns off south to north. Interesting. And what happens is the vineyards further south burn off faster. They get more ambient, or more sun, there's the longer hours. So little, it just keeps burning more further. More shaded. And so, you know, depending on where you were, it, 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 they still suffered from the same issues that we did. Didn't ripen as well. It was a cool climate. Um, I mean, the the things that happened in 2011 were the same, kind of, some more dramatically than same others. Ch Even in our Oregon, our 2011 uh, Oregon uh, Pinot from Rose, the Rose Rock Pinot. Rose uh, Rock. It, we we harvested it on November 6th. And it was and a Thanksgiving wine. It was literally. I mean, Pinot is never harvested on November sixth. It was really anywhere. late. It was. Well, crazy. that's one thing. Like I know a lot of the winemakers are so excited about last year and this year, especially, is they're going to be home for Thanksgiving. 
And they're so excited about yeah, this because it hasn't really happened in like the last, you know, we do like a seven year span and it's been pretty late harvest um, one after another. So they're all very excited that they'll actually be home no, with their families for Thanksgiving. I mean, this is one of the things kind of circling back around why I got in the business. One of the things that fascinates me is just the sheer amount of work that goes into you know, making this beautiful, glamorous end product. The amount of blood, sweat, and tears that goes into this from from grape to bottle to glass is is stunning. It is. And it, it's it is a dirty, lot of gross, hard. hard, long hours. It's I mean it's right now Make it cry right, your mama. Yeah, it's, I mean right now it's most serious business. Most serious winemakers are there were, they don't sleep for, until no. November. And, and what do we say about winemakers? So anybody who says they're a winemaker in this time of year, all the way up through November, you say, show me your hands. And if they're not purple, they're full of baloney. Well, unless they're making Chardonnay. Okay, well, how many Chardonnay-only <laughs> producers are out there? Okay, Just not saying. many. All right. Anyway, no. Right, all right. Well, we won't harass all of you, but... If you're in the red yeah, wine biz, then but anyway, your hands you, better be perfect. Honestly, if you see a winemaker, please just hug him or her. Or her. <laughs> hug your winemaker. Just hug him or her. Get him a gift certificate for a massage yeah. or foot rub. You manicure. Manicure. Yeah. So this is, the, this is the time of year that it's just... It's, uh, it's insane. Yeah, it's crazy fun. And insanity is is on right now. Uh, Flawless Crowns is saying cheers uh, to making the cellar 2011. It's fantastic. Nailed the spirit of the Anderson Valley perfectly. Bravo. And uh, so, Floss Crowns, what would you say is the appropriate attire for these Pinot Noirs? I'd love to hear your feedback. Mm -hmm. and, I um, think a fez. A, th a fez with perhaps a nice smoking, a purple velvet smoking jacket. Excellent. And a pimp cane and per hat, too? Or? Perhaps a... Bunny slippers. Bunny slippers. Exactly. I like bunny slippers. Bunny slippers Yeah, no, fantastic. that's exactly... <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we have Cellar Mistress coming in. It says, looks like it was worth the wait. Um, such a cool venue. Yes, the Barlow is awesome. Congratulations. And uh, more tweets coming in. So, uh, I was worried we were going to break the internet. And I, we may have. We it's, this is <laughs> two two yeah, times. <laughs> it's been known to happen. I think we found the end of the internet, actually. Um, what's the price point on these wines? So the Chardonnay that you were all enjoying, Wine the, number the, one. the Sonoma Coast Chardonnay is thirty-five dollars. Excellent. Uh, it is available through the winery McPhailWines.com. Um, the what else? Oh, the San Giacomo, the two thousand eleven San Giacomo, uh, is forty-nine dollars, and the two thousand eleven Anderson Valley is forty dollars. So really, I'm. We're practically giving them away at that price. Oh my gosh! I mean, at, at that price, you really should buy two of each. I mean, that's cases insane. Cases. Well, that helps the cases Como Foundation. Each. I mean, exactly. These are seriously troubled times, and these poor it's people with these comeovers. And I. It's, it's, be strong. Please help them. Be strong, little I buckaroo. Try. Oh my God. <sighs> All right, trying to compose myself over this, the, the comeovers. It's just insane. Uh, so you can go visit McPhail at the Barlow. Uh, you can find out about their tastings on CellarPass.com. Of course, you can get their wines at McPhailWines.com. Dot com. And sign up for their mailing list. Become part of their family and get invited to the amazing events that they have going on. Uh, sample the first release of their wines. Be the first to know about it always. And uh, in general, just enjoy what true love of their craft um, can do. And these are wines that are really from the heart and you cannot beat these anywhere. Love them, and we love you all for joining us today. Thank you so much. We'll see you next Wednesday at 4 p.m. from Hall Wine Santa Lina, Cellar Pass TV, and I've been your host, Sarah Elliman, the Vineyard Vixen, and this has been Jim Morris from McPhail. Wait, we're Cheers. done? We're done. Wow, I, well, thanks for joining us, everybody. Cheers, everyone. Cheers.